Welcome to Focus Israel. The news this past week has been dominated by the European Union proposal regarding the future of Jerusalem, as well as the Israeli government's decision to freeze all new construction in Israeli communities in Judea and Samaria. The Israeli community of Tekoa is located in Judea, 12 kilometers south of Jerusalem. More than 500 families live here today, and another 150 families are in the process of building houses. Many of them have been directly affected by the government decision to freeze construction. Ruth Wolfish is the chairwoman of the governing board of Tekoa and explains the consequences of the decision. First of all, the freeze uh, directly affects anybody who has not started building uh, and doesn't even have, maybe was about to apply for a license. And I know of one family in particular that was about to start applying for a license, and now they are they are stymied. They can't they can't uh, go ahead. So any new housing is totally frozen. Um, as far as housing that's in the, in, as I say, in intermediate stages, this is something that is very vague. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of nuances in this in this uh, situation, and therefore there's a lot of um, there's a lot of, uh, of, of of ignorance, really. I think even on the part of the government, exactly what did they mean when they said X or Y? So. And, and what is a foundation? Does it have to have a certain amount of, uh, of, uh, of steel, okay? Or is it enough to have dug d deeply? And Large sums of money have been invested in a big building project that has now virtually come to a standstill. The Israeli government claims that the construction freeze proves that they are committed to reach a final peace agreement, while the Palestinian leadership dismisses the decision as meaningless and refuses to resume the peace negotiations. However, it is not just the Israelis that are affected negatively by the construction freeze. I think one of the ironies of this, uh, this government decision is that it will, uh, it will be quite detrimental to the Arabs who live in our area. We have hundreds of Arabs coming to Tekoa daily and building, uh, and uh, that's how they make their living. We have Arab contractors who uh, run rad large projects in Tekoa. They will be unemployed as a result. They will become unemployed as a result of this government decision. Um, certainly, they will be very disgruntled by that, and we fear that uh, this could also motivate them to pursue uh, activities that will be to uh, that are uh, are dangerous for us. Uh, we believe that when people are working and make a living, uh, that keeps them fairly satisfied and, uh, and very likely to maintain better relations with, the, with their neighbors. So this decision will also uh, have a very detrimental effect economically on the hundreds of Arabs from our area who uh, engage in building in Tekoa. The critique against the government construction freeze has been very strong in Israel since nothing good seems to come out of it. In Judea and Samaria, people are also anxious about what will come next. First a freeze, then forceful evacuation, some claim. However, Ruth Wolfish has confidence and is optimistic. Who knows what the fate of any of our uh, uh, communities that, are, um, uh, that have been built on the other side of the Green Line, what will be their fate? Uh, we don't know, but we believe that uh, we will be living in Tekoa uh, forever. That's what we believe. We often only hear of antagonism and violence from Israel, but life here is also filled with joy and hope. Shlomo Gad was born a month ago, the first child of Hani and Daniel Samir. According to Jewish law, firstborn sons need to be redeemed from the duty to serve in the temple, as it is stated in Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether man or animal. During this ceremony, called Pidyon Haben, the child's father gives five silver coins to a Kohen, a descendant of the priests that served in the temple 2,000 years ago. He then reads two blessings. My name is Paul Whedon, and that's all for today from Focus Israel. See us again next week.